Honorable Uhuru Kenyatta, Your Excellency the Deputy President, Dr. William Ruto, the Honorable Speaker of the National Assembly, the Honorable Speaker of the Senate, the President of the Court of Appeal, the judges here present, the Honorable the Attorney General, Cabinet Secretaries present here, the Governor of uh, Nairobi County, Honorable Michael uh, Sonko, the Chief Registrar of the Judiciary, the members of the Judicial Service Commission, development partners, heads of uh, agencies of the NCAJ, honorable magistrates, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Your Excellency, before I make my remarks, in front of you here are judges of the Court of Appeal, judges of the Supreme Court, judges of the Court of Appeal, and the presiding judges of various courts in our country. We could not bring all of them here because that would have meant grinding all the activities to a halt. But the judges in Nairobi, most of them are here. So that's why, well, I mean, you see them here. If it were not for the tight schedule that you, 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 you are in, we had planned that, they, that normally they would march in a procession to this place but we have to cut that short because of your tight schedule. It gives me great pleasure and honor to welcome you all to the launch of the 2017-2018 State of the Judiciary and Administration of Just Report. I thank you, Your Excellency, for honoring the, our invitation to grace this launch. You were present during the last launch of a similar report in 2017. We are honored and indeed privileged to have you here again today in spite of your very, very busy schedule. Article 132.1b of the Constitution requires Your Excellency to deliver the State of the Nation Address in Parliament every year. On the other hand, Section 5 one of the Judicial Service Act requires the Chief Justice to give an annual report on the nation, to the nation on the state of the judiciary and the administration of justice. The first sitting, Your Excellency, under Article 126.2 of the Constitution of the newly elected Parliament is an, imp an important event for the legislature. All these are important constitutional functions which bring together the three arms of government and the constitutional uh, commissions. Your presence here today, Your Excellency, is therefore of great significance, not only to the judiciary as an institution, but to the nation and our system of constitutional governance. In this regard, I wish to appreciate and recognize the presence of the leadership of the legislature uh, that is the Honorable Speakers of the National Assembly and the Senate. I will revert to this cooperation later in my speech. Before I do so, please allow me to highlight uh, the progress we have made as the judiciary in the justice sector. In many ways, Your Excellency, the state of the judiciary um, administration report is a tool of accountability for the pub, to the public as it provides a feedback on how in the year under review we have endeavored to discharge the mandate bestowed upon us by the people of Kenya and also make commitments on how we are going to continue. Despite the funding challenges, the judiciary has made significant strides in the pursuit of many of its goals. One of the key activities 
um, in the period we are reporting on, Your Excellency, is the hearing of election petitions. We saw an increase in the number of petitions from 188 uh, in, the, in 2013, 2014, following the 2013 general election, to 391 in 2017 uh, general election. We had and determined all those uh, petitions within the timelines set out in the Constitution, thanks to the extensive training and preparation <coughs> that we had undertaken through the Judiciary Committee on Elections. Your Excellency, one of the persistent challenges in our justice system is the backlog of cases. <clears throat> when I launched the Sustaining Judiciary Transformation Blueprint in 2017, I gave an undertaking to the country that we would clear all cases more than five years old by the end of last year. At that time, uh, Your Excellency, the number of cases which were more than five years old were 170,186. Between January 2017 and December 31st, 2018, we resolved a total of 148,877. I mean, of those cases, and that works, Your Excellency, to 87% to success in clearing them. This is in addition, Your Excellency, to the disposal of another 611,948 cases that our courts completed in the same period. As we cleared these uh, cases, some others graduated, Your, Your Excellency, to the category of five years old. We aim to clear, uh, to clear them by the end of this year, in spite of the fact that there, are, there is a steady growth in the number of cases which are being filed in the judiciary every year. At the end of the day, Your Excellency, our aim is to ensure that we don't have any case more than five years and gradually reduce them uh, and, and, and to, 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 to the maximum uh, period of about two to three years, so that we, we are hearing cases on um, really time. Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, we continue to experience a severe shortage of resources, both human and financial. Some courts are particularly hard hit. In the Environment and Land Court, for instance, because of the numbers of the judges we have, Your Excellency, one cannot get a hearing date this year because the diary is full. The Court of Appeal has 19 judges against the set minimum number of 30. The same is true with other uh, courts. This shortage continues to amber the effective disposal of cases. The Judicial Service Commission has uh, commenced the process of recruiting more than 40 judges and over 100 magistrates so that they can um, meet this shortfall and deal with the cases that are brought before us. Your Excellency, we have ensured that in the recruitment policy, we continue to adhere to the requirements, to the constitutional requirements, and we pride ourselves as an institution that is well on its way to achieving the gender parity in our staff composition. We have a total workforce of uh, 5,698, comprising 51.3% male and 48.7% female. So you can see we are about to bridge that gap. Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, a key plank in our judicial transformation involves improving our infrastructure in the entire country. We have made significant achievements in this respect in line with the judiciary transformation framework and the sustaining judiciary transformation frameworks. We currently have a total of 102 court construction and rehabilitation works going on in the country. 
these projects are in two parts. One comprises of those funded by, uh, through the facility from the World Bank under the Judicial Performance Improvement uh, Project, under which we have 29 major construction projects going on in various parts of the country. The other projects are I mean, funded by the government of Kenya. However, to, due to reduced funding, most of these projects have stalled, awaiting a review of the budgetary allocations. We have, in the, in the uh, last few months, Your Excellency had extensive and fruitful engagements with the relevant parliamentary committees, particularly the Just and Legal Affairs Committee, chaired by Honorable uh, William Cheptumu, who is, who is here, and the Budget and Appropriation Committee, under the chairmanship of Honorable Kimani Ichungwa, who is also here, as well as the Treasury Cabinet Secretary, Honorable uh, Andrew Rotich. And we are happy that we are making significant improvements and are going to have um, <clears throat> an improved budget in the next uh, financial year. We are also at an advanced stage in the adoption of the Judiciary Fund regulations, which we believe will go a long way in enhancing the financial operations of the judiciary. Your Excellency, you have uh, this morning gone through our building here, the, the, I mean the Supreme Court. You saw where the Court of Appeals President sits, not to mention where the conveniences are, quite a distance uh, away, and we are really squished here. Our plea, Your Excellency, is I know we are constrained with funds, and you have rightly stated that we should complete, aim at completing the already uh, projects under, under construction. But Your Excellency, we are appealing to you to make an exception to this. Because of the, uh, the way we are crowded here, we are requesting Your Excellency, we have a piece of land at uh, Kilimani. If you would make an exception so that we start the construction of the Court of Appeal there, and we'll also get quite an uh, I mean space for uh, the other offices. The other places, Your Excellency, which are in dire need of, uh, of, 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 of court buildings are Meru, Eldoret, and Kisi. If you were to get time, Your Excellency, and go to Meru, for, uh, for, for instance, and see how crowded our staff are there, you will see what we are uh, uh, appealing for. So, Your Excellency, if you could make an exception and we get funds, we know this will not be done in one year. But if we can start and, and uh, do it uh, gradually, in a period of, say, three years, we will complete and be able to get reasonable places to operate from. Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, another area in which we are advancing is automation and the digitization of our uh, records. Out of 132 uh, courts in the country, 126 have now reliable internet connect connectivity. The remaining six are in extremely remote areas, but every effort is being made to also connect them. The manual recording of uh, court proceedings is an onerous and time-consuming activity that significantly hampers the rate at which uh, we, we dispose cases. To mitigate this, in partnership with the Minister of ICT, the judiciary plans to utilize the government's ACHIRA program where we engage young people to do transcription of court proceeding, uh, proceedings, thereby also creating job opportunities for, for them. We are working with the, with the CS Mucheru, and uh, he informs me that plans are underway to assist us uh, digitize our pro uh, pro I mean proceedings. Your Excellency, allow me to briefly revisit my statement about the significance of your presence here, together the, with the leadership of uh, the legislature. While the judiciary, the executive, and the legislature are established under the, the Constitution as separate and independent arms of government, the same con constitution emphasizes the need 
for interdependence, cooperation and collaboration. Indeed, some of the solutions to the challenges that I have highlighted earlier lie in the better coordination between the agencies in the three arms of government. No other process provides a better example of the need for interagency collaboration than the current war against corruption. Months of acrimonious exchanges and blame games between different state agencies only served to deepen the already intractable challenges and further hurt the efforts to fight corruption. However, I'm happy about the positive developments that are taking place under the auspices of the National Council on Administration of Justice. We are now working together as the justice sector agencies in the interest of the nation. In order to expeditiously iron out existing and uh, emerging challenges that would weaken our collective efforts, we have established a committee drawn from all the agencies involved to ensure that nothing between us impairs the fight against corruption. When we are engaged in the blame games, Your Excellency, even some of the achievements that we make are sometimes overlooked. With the collaboration, Your Excellency, I'm happy to report that between July 2017 and December last year, we determined a total of 91 corruption cases, out of which 46 were convictions. As of today, there are 91 pending corruption cases whose proceedings are ongoing at a steady pace. With the, uh, within the environment of increased cooperation and better coordination, we expect a significant improvement in the, I mean, in the rate at which we would dispose of these cases. While still on, uh, on corruption, Your Excellency, I want to say this. Corruption is endemic in our country. It is there even in the judiciary. For us to succeed and reduce it, every Kenyan of goodwill has to say no to it. In the last few weeks, Senior Counsel Mr. Hamed Nasili Abdullahi publicly claimed that some judges of the Supreme Court were bribed to decide the Wachia gubernatorial petition in the way that they did. I challenge him to file a petition and assure him that the Judicial Service Commission will take stern and appropriate action against those judges if pro uh, given the evidence of alleged corruption. Your Excellency, let me at this point express our profound gratitude to the government for allocating to us for other house next to the Minimani Law Courts for use by the Anti-Corruption Division. We have already uh, tendered for its re remodeling and in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in about a month we will be there sitting and uh, doing, I mean, hearing cases of corruption. We want to thank you, Your Excellency, for that assistance. And uh, in addition, with the funds that have been availed to us to remodel those buildings, I mean that building. Your Excellency, in the spirit of working together, another interagency committee has been set up also through the National Council on Administration of, of Justice to address the concerns in the commercial justice sector. We are fully aware of the importance of efficient resolution of commercial disputes as an integral step towards creating a good business environment and enhancing investor confidence. As part of this, we have continued to not only devise ways of enhancing our efficiencies in the commercial division, but also vigorously promoting alternative means of resolving disputes such as the court and next mediation. The main advantage of this form of dispute resolution is that it allows parties themselves to control the process and arrive at a win-win situation acceptable to all of them. In, the employ in its employment, its employment has uh, not only unlocked billions of shillings previously locked up in litigation, 
in the commercial and the tax division, but has also assisted Kenya to rise in the world bank's ease of doing business ranking from position 82 to 61 globally and the fourth in Africa in the, in, the, in the latest report. We have no doubt that we will uh, make further advances in this regard and Your Excellency, we want to give you our undertaking to do the best we can to um, foster uh, investor confidence in our country. We believe uh, um, that cooperation between state agencies or being seen together does not result in the, what some people call state capture. We will be steadfast in the defense of our judicial independence, but still hold that collaboration is one of the cardinal principles of our constitutional system of governance. In the provisions of the, of the Constitution, the provisions of the Constitution not only emphasize the distinction between the arms of, of government, but also the interdependence between them at different levels. Indeed, it would be an affront to that same Constitution if public institutions resorted to working in silos while narrowly interpreting their mandate and the independence. In this regard, I have, uh, in the last few weeks, had engaged engagements with the com uh, business community and the, and the National Development Implementation and the Communication Committee. Their clarion call, Your Excellency, is for the speedy resolution of cases that are stalling development uh, projects in the country. It concerns us in the judiciary, Your Excellency, and it should be the concern of the entire country. For instance, that about 350 billion of government project funds are tied up in it litigation. I understand that some of these projects have strict performance timelines. In some cases, I am aware that there is a real risk that development partners and investors would withdraw from those projects unless proceeded on diligently. I'm keen to ensure that litigation does not derail the development agenda in this country. In this regard, Your Excellency, just like in the corruption cases we are handling, do not be surprised, Your Excellency, if we rule against the government in some of them. As a constitutional democracy governed by the rule of law, the courts have always decided and will continue to decide cases on the basis of the evidence placed before them and the applicable law. If the government has a good case, and I've said this before, we are under legal obligation to find in favor of the government. If, on the other hand, the government has a weak case or some of its officials have flouted the law, we are equally under a legal obligation to dismiss that case. That, in, that, in such an eventuality, your, your, your Excellency, that should not be the cause of tension between the executive and the judiciary. I want to assure Your Excellency that we are doing everything possible to speed up the resolution of the cases that are placed before us. Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, as I conclude, let me reiterate that the judiciary will continue the reform agenda as set out in the Sustaining Judiciary Transformation Blueprint and align itself to the processes and the systems that improve its outputs. Accordingly, we are con constantly reflecting on how to improve our constitutional structures. The judiciary has completed a significant review of its organizational structure so that we are better designed for the world-class service delivery to our people. We are currently looking into the implementation of the new structure, and it is our hope that these efforts will help the judiciary optimize its operations. Once again, thank you, Your Excellency. Thank you, Your Excellency, the Deputy President, the Speakers of uh, Parliament, and the colleagues and uh, the visitors who have, uh, who have come here. 
let me mention your excellency before I sit down that we are happy to see um, the um, Inspector General of Police here, Mr. Boynet. I don't want to say more, but we, we are happy. We have worked with him very well. I don't know if the Inspector General of Prisons is here also. He may not be here, but we have worked with them very well. And I know they, they say that they are, they are, they are, they are, their service has been wonderful to the country, and we, we all want to thank them for the cooperation we have had. Also here present, Your Excellency, is the President of the Law Society of Kenya, Mr. Alan Gichui. We have worked as the, the Law Society is a major stakeholder in our activities, <coughs> and we are happy that they, he could join us uh, this morning. With those few remarks, Your Excellency, we are very happy that you have, could find time and come and be with us this morning and uh, share this occasion with us. It is now my pleasure to call upon the Deputy President to make a few remarks and thereafter invite His Excellency the President to make his speech. Thank you very much. Thank you. Your Excellency, the President.